More words, don't be a dick, Dak. It's about media history and it's really amazing. That's great significance. Um, it's supposed to be about Philadelphia history, about Philadelphia uh, celebrities and stuff like that, and it's really amazing. Philadelphia. It's been about a while since James was supposed to be shot, but he should be here coming soon. I think. I guess. I wonder. I hope. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of people down there, but. Oh. And you called and got the. Well, need to get in reserve. We just gotta go down there, right? Now we gotta find parking. That's where I was waiting for you. What's that? Down, all the way down in Penance Hall. No, 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 there. Back at, at the gallery? Yeah. I figured. Uh, so wait, go down to 6th and then what? Yeah, it's, 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 it's you see that mm -hmm. Wachovia building? Yeah. You want to make a left there. <sighs> now, find parking around the Independence Mall. And if Seven. not, then we'll find it up by the gate. Um, let me just guide you. It's easier to try and talk. Not this down by one. No, you make the left. That's where, this is the visitor center. That's where you get your ticket to the We're going to go back by the statues too, Ted. Okay. We're figuring to do the Independence Hall. Yeah. No, we didn't. Well, maybe we'll do the living right there. And I also want to do the, um, I want to find Frankie's grave. Okay, now where? Okay. All right, just take your time. Keep going slow. You'll be making a left. Keep going now. I'm looking if there's parking handicaps. Well, if you see one, I, I didn't. I don't see any open, though, and I don't see anybody with tags. Tag. Well, you can just keep your eyes open. Uh, can you make a left to make a little? No, not here. Oh no, I'm sorry. We're going to have to uh, make a right on the 4th Street North or we're going to get stuck on over the bridge. Oh, we're stuck. You can't, you're going to go right over the bridge now. Yes, you will. If I go that way, if I go, I can go right here. I can go down All right, the street. You're going to have to sneak behind the, the damn circulation uh, where they make coins. You make a right here and then make a right behind this building. It has four minutes left on it, so. Here you go, Ted. Can you pop these in the, in the thing? You got them all? Mm -hmm.
Yes, it's right there. That's Benjamin Franklin's last resting place of where all those pennies are. People throw pennies on this grave to show respect. That's the great America of our country has gone through. Is this where he's buried right here? Yeah. I threw a penny on that grave. How'd you know to do that? Because you saw it on there? Yeah. Listen to this guy for a little bit. This guy in costume? Yeah, I know. They're fun. I don't think you can get in. You gotta get a ticket. Here we go. Uh, when I came, uh, there's only one month. I'll see. Wow, they're talking. Their, their talks are 15 minutes. I should have brought the team. Yeah. Watch him with the water. Oh, oh, that's the guy he was talking about. Yeah, wait right here, Ted. Well, I'd rather get tickets. This goes on all the time. All right. <laughs> Hands, I don't have tentacles. Uh, he, I don't think any amendments were passed in the conference for when he was the president. Nation, that people come and tell stories here. Yes, yeah, for the walk, the Philadelphia walks. While we're here, James, I think the best way is to pump money in the thing now. Because what we're not up an hour. right here and this is Wachovia I think. Yeah. It's Wachovia Bank right here? Yes it is. And there's right, the past days in the ammo.
Oh, do you need a picture? Yeah. Oh, did you just hit the red button, Ted? I'm trying to.
prisoner's box. This is where the prisoner literally stood trial. And you didn't slouch, you didn't slump, because if you did, the bailiff would use his chin stand. That's a brass tip. He'd smack you on the back of the head. You got the idea real quick that you stood trial. Now, here we have a gang of desperados, all right? What says this jury? Are these guys innocent or guilty? Guilty. Guilty? Oh, I'm oh. innocent until. Thank you very much, Send them away. Being our prisoners of the day. Put them in the stocks. <laughs> Now this is the room you came here to see today, ladies and gentlemen. This is the assembly room at Independence Hall. This is where the Second Continental Congress began meeting on the 5th of May, 1775. Now remember, war had broken out up here in Lexington and Concord, up here in Boston, uh, back on April 19th. So the war was already on when these guys came here. Now they did what they were sent here to do. They sent a letter to King George III, and it's called the Olive Branch Petition. The Olive Branch of Peace was offered to King George one last time. Now, in that letter, Congress asked King George to stop the fighting and to compromise on the issues that were dividing us. Issues like uh, taxation, representation in Parliament, acts of trade, those writs of assistance, those were those uh, general search warrants the British used, and the quartering of troops in our homes at our own expense. Well, they got a reply from King George III. He told these 
meant that the war would continue. And when his armies had crushed ours, he was going to have these men hanged as the traitors that they were. All of a sudden, to lose the war meant to lose your life. So objective number one is to not lose the war. Whether they wanted to become it or not, these men became the first government of the United States of America. They didn't have any choice. To lose was to die. So here they were. And they weren't fools. They knew that they weren't going to defeat Great Britain all by themselves. They needed outside help. So they sent representatives to three countries in Europe that had fought Britain many times to the French, to the Spanish, and to the Dutch. And all three of those countries were quite sympathetic, but they also reminded us, you know, you guys are brothers, and brothers have fights, then brothers make up. If we get into this war, and then you guys make up, we'd have to fight both of them. And we're not going to do that. When you mean business, come back and see us. Well, by mean business, they meant to declare your independence. Now this was a tough step, but these guys knew that that was going to happen eventually. This just pushed them over the brink. This, my friends, is the Virginia table. It was from this table on the 7th of June, 1776, that Richard Henry Lee got up and he made a motion. Now Richard Henry Lee is the uncle of that more famous Robert E. Lee. Well, Richard Henry Lee got up and he moved that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states. Congress heard Lee's motion. They did what Congress always does. They submitted it to a committee. But what a committee. John Adams of Massachusetts, Roger Sherman from Connecticut, Robert Livingston of New York, Dr. Benjamin Franklin, who always sat here, this being the Pennsylvania table, and a tall, sandy-haired lawyer from Virginia named Thomas Jefferson. He was but 33 years of age, a young man, but he was also the best writer in the colonies. And so the committee asked him to prepare the rough draft of a Declaration of Independence. Well, for 17 days in June, Jefferson wrote, gave the committee his rough draft, they made a few changes, they brought the document in this room, and Congress went over it line by line, and they made changes. Reason? They were putting their heads in the noose by signing this thing that ought to say exactly what they wanted. Well, on the 4th of July, 1776, right here in this room, Thomas Jefferson's Declaration of Independence was approved and sent to the printers, and 220 copies were rushed up and down the coast to all the colonies to be read to all the people. Now, that wonderful handwritten copy, you know, the one that looks like this, now there were 220 of the printed ones. There was only one of these, all right? The original is down at the National Archives in Washington, D.C. This came from our gift shop, it'll have to do. This was signed on that very spot on the 2nd of August, 1776. Okay? The first to sign was that fellow from Massachusetts, John Hancock. You know, he made that big signature in the middle we've all come to know. Okay? And when he signed it, Hancock then turned. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm trying to come here. <laughs> okay? Then he turned the document around for the others to sign, and no one got up. No one got up for about 20 minutes, and finally Hancock said to these guys, look, if this goes to Britain as is, mine is the only signature on here. You know, give me a break. That's when Dr. Franklin got up and he made a very famous statement. He said, you know, if we don't all hang together now, gentlemen, we will surely all hang separately later. He got up and he signed. 56 individuals eventually signed this. It took some courage to sign this. If you sign this and we lose the war, the British know who to come and hang. You gave them your autograph. Okay, so it took a lot of courage to sign this. But these were men of rare courage to sign what they did. Now, the other reason why this room is so important to we Americans, you do realize our first government, the Articles of Confederation, failed. This was a weak league of friendship between 13 
little independent countries. And while the war was on, boy, were we united. But when the war ended, we began to drift apart and began to argue over everything, over boundaries and territory, over the rivers that flowed into the interior, over taxes. Does that sound familiar to anybody in this room? Okay. Uh, we argued over foreign affairs, uh, trade, uh, war, peace, all kinds of things. Finally, those two gentlemen I told you about in the East Wing, James Madison and Alexander Hamilton, called for a meeting in this very room to strengthen the Articles of Confederation government. Now, the trick was you needed all 13 states to agree to any change. Anyone here from the great state of Rhode Island? See, Rhode Island still has the Senate representatives in Rhode Island. Rhode Island refused to participate. The 12 states that sent delegates understood they were going to have to scrap the old government and start anew. Now, they weren't sent here to do that, so some of them left. Those that remained met in secret. They met in secret, and they kept the secret. Can you imagine how fast somebody had that out the, out the door today? They had the doors closed and sealed. The windows closed and sealed. This is an average day in July in Philadelphia. Okay? Imagine when it really gets hot, and it does. Hot and humid. These guys had all their clothing on, you know? It got hot in here, and I mean the rhetoric got hot. These guys argued loud and long over every aspect of a new government. How strong would the federal government be as compared to the states? Big question. How strong would this new president be? Would he be a king? How many houses in Congress? What kinds of things, what kind of things would they legislate? What kind of things were prohibited? They argued loud and long. Slavery was a big issue here in Philadelphia. Northern states wanted to end the African slave trade. Southern states, especially Georgia and South Carolina, informed these guys, we can't live without slavery. If you get rid of the slave trade, we won't join your country. And boy, I mean, they argue loud and long over this stuff. Many times it looked like they're, they leave and there'd be no new government. But finally, on the 17th of September, 1787, they put together enough compromises that the United States Constitution was again signed at that, at that very spot and sent to the states for their approval. You notice I haven't put my hands on anything in here? We have a lot of original pieces in here. I don't put my hands on anything. Let me show you. This is number one, folks. This is the Rising Sun Chair. And it really is the Rising Sun Chair. It's not a fact soon. This is the chair that George Washington used to preside over the Constitutional Convention. <coughs> ben Franklin gave it his name. He said he often looked at the sun on the top of the back of the chair, not knowing it was a rising or setting sun. And now that he's seen the Constitution, he had the pleasure to know it was the rising sun of a new nation. See the chandelier? Three pieces, cut glass. Mr. Hannon here since 1744. See that coat of arms, the Penn family coat of arms? Been hanging there since 1751. See this stick? This walking stick belonged to Thomas Jefferson. He got it from, 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 from uh, Ben Franklin in 1776. So you see this. I don't touch anything. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have to conclude this tour because the next tour will be coming over in just a minute. So at this time, I have to ask you to leave and go through these doors at the south, south exit of Independence Hall. I hope you come back many times, and I surely hope you enjoy your stay in the Oh, okay, right there. Okay. This is the first time I've been sprung. This, this is actually the third time I've been sprung by our founding fathers. Okay. Hello. Don't do that. All right.
elsewhere. Yeah, I signed it. Good. Oh, it's too much signed. 